Hi everyone, I'm Autistic Ange. This is a podcast for adults who recently found out they're autistic and are looking for other autistic people like them. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm just sharing my own experiences as I work my way through life with a more informed lens of who I am and maybe others will be able to relate. So let's talk sensory stuff. I've read that autistic people are very sensory sensitive, so I thought I'd share what my sensory stuff is. Uh, Okay, so sound. I don't like loud sounds like car horns, sirens, whistles. My ears literally hurt when I hear those things. I don't like the sound of people chewing their food, crunching, slurping. It's fucking disgusting. I was like that as a kid too, so I doubt that's ever going away. But I don't like to hear any chewing. And no gulping from taking a sip of something either. That's just gross. I can't handle multiple people talking over each other. Um, When I used to have to go to staff meetings, someone would ask me a question from across this ginormous table while two or three other people are having a conversation. I couldn't separate talking to this person from the other voices. Like, I guess people can drown out stuff like that or whatever, but I don't have that ability. I don't like uh, pen clicking, fingernail tapping, lip smacking, bubblegum popping. Um, People walking around in flip flops is annoying. Hearing people peeing and pooping tops my list of sounds I don't ever want to hear. Uh, And I hate public restrooms. It's just the worst. They're gross. They smell bad. It's nasty. However, I love listening to my cats eat their tuna, but I don't want to hear humans eat. So I do not understand that. Um... I love music. Not a day goes by that I don't listen to it. I listen to stuff like dubstep while I'm working because it helps me concentrate. Uh, I can't listen to lyrics while I'm working because I'll just focus on the lyrics. One of the only times I love loud noises is when I'm at a show and the music's blasting or when I'm putzing around the house with Metallica at full volume. That's nice too. Um, Smell is a huge sensory thing for me. I either really love the smell of something or I really hate it. Love times a thousand and hate times a thousand. Uh, I'm obsessed with this little store I go to just because of this one scent they have, which is like a tropical fruity kind of smell that they call island nectar. Um, So I have an island nectar bar of soap. I have island nectar body butter. I have island nectar whipped soap. I have island nectar laundry detergent. I have a mini... Island Nectar body butter I carry with me when I'm out and about in case I'm anxious because the scent literally calms me down and it helps me sleep better too. I use body spray daily. I only buy hairspray or mousse that smells really good. Uh, I used to light like 20 candles a day before wax melts became a thing so now I use those every day and I only use sensationals because they smell better to me than other brands and are easier to get out of the wax holder. Um... Pumpkin and cinnamon get used in fall and winter, and tropical smells in the spring and summer. At the other end is my hate for certain smells. Hate really just means I'm afraid I'll vomit because it doesn't take much to get me nauseous. I will not use the bathroom after someone takes a shit for at least 45 minutes. I have this weird thing where I wouldn't be able to breathe through my mouth because I think there are like poop particles flying around and... They're going to get in my mouth. And if I can't wait the 45 minutes, I'll put a mask on like the ones we wear for COVID and just breathe through my mouth under the mask. (laughs) That's pretty sad. (laughs) Uh, For food, I eat pretty much the same things. I didn't start listening to my body until last year when what I'm sure were IBS issues were getting worse. So I fasted for a bit and then ate things here and there to see how my body would respond. Um... It was kind of fascinating because I figured out I'm allergic to almond milk by the almost instant runs for the bathroom I'd make after drinking some. It's just crazy how disconnected from my body I was because it wasn't the first time I've had the runs after drinking almond milk. I just never connected it, which is bizarre to me. Also, when I find a food I like, it's all I'll eat until I'm either burned out on it and I never want to see it again or I'm ready to take a break and eat other things, but I'll go back to it. So here are the things I can eat. Uh, Fun fact, I hate cooking and I don't like having to prepare very much for what I'm about to eat uh, because I'm lazy. For example, Frosted Flakes that come in in those little uh, on-the-go bowls are are awesome. 
because I'm so lazy that I don't even want to get a bowl out and pour Frosted Flakes in it from the box. Uh, I get these breakfast bowls with eggs and stuff that only take three minutes in the microwave. I like gyoza, aka pot stickers, because those only take 10 minutes tops to cook. Uh, I buy fruit bowls because I'm too lazy to go pick out the different fruit I want and then take all the fruit home and then cut all the fruit up and put all the fruit in bowl. Uh, I'll, I'll pretty much spend the extra money to get stuff that makes less work for me. Fruit bowls are one. I like the cheese that comes already cut up. If I do need to cook something, I I like the veggies and stuff already cut up in those little containers so I don't have to do it myself. Um, sometimes I'll keep some iced coffee in the fridge. So like if I wake up and I'm too lazy to put a, a Keurig, like a cup in the Keurig and wait a whole 60 seconds. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of sad too. Um... When I used to go to those stupid work parties people expected you to go to, and they'd be like where everyone has to make something, like kind of like a potluck, I'd sign up for cookies and then just bring a box of them from the bakery because I do not want to bake. Side note, I will not eat anything made by people I don't know extremely well. Potlucks, bake sales, I mean, why the hell are people okay with eating stuff made by complete strangers? You don't even know if they like scratch their ass, pick their nose touch something they shouldn't have. It's just gross. I'm never going to understand why people are okay with doing that. Here's one. When my wife and I were in the early stages of dating, she left chicken Alfredo in a container outside my door because, uh, my apartment door, because I think I'd been like super busy at work that day and wouldn't get home until late. So the next day, um, I thanked her profusely, but informed her that I was allergic to Alfredo sauce, um, and that I couldn't eat it. I, that was a lie. I don't know why I just didn't go with the lie that I ate it and it was delicious. I think it was like a year or two before I, I told her that I lied about being allergic to Alfredo because we'd been at the, the grocery store and she was going to get some Alfredo sauce for dinner, but was like, oh yeah, that's right. You're allergic to it. So I had to admit that I actually was not and why I lied. I mean, back then I had no idea what her home looked like and stuff. Also, texture is important. I won't eat those uh, spirally noodles, for example, because I don't like how they feel in my mouth. I don't like certain foods touching. Um, I won't eat or drink anything with a, uh, within a day or two of it expiring because in my mind, I think it's already expired. Uh, one time I drank milk the day before the expiration date, swallowed a lump and threw it up. If there's leftovers that have been in the fridge for a week, I'll either throw out the whole thing, Tupperware and all, because I don't want to smell old food and vomit, or I'll ask my wife to throw the food out and wash the containers, because I, I can't deal with it. Um, I don't like hugging people or being super close to them. When my wife and I used to go to the movie theater before the pandemic, I'd have to sit at the very end of the aisle with her as a buffer between me and the person next to her. I don't like people thinking they can just pat me on the shoulder or stand so close when there's no need to or try to hug me without asking if I even want a hug from them because 10 times out of 10, I do not want a hug. I don't like soft or light touch. It has to be firm. I'm constantly doing something with my hands, which I guess is stimming, but I don't like the way that word sounds, if that makes sense. Uh, writing, typing, tossing a ball, fidgeting with anything, petting a cat, coloring. My hands are never still. I'm pretty sure I have arthritis, but it's not too bad. It makes me a little concerned about what the hell I'll do when I get older and I, and I can't use my hands that well. Uh, what else? Um, I buy specific brands of clothing because of how they feel. Uh, and I actually started buying multiples of stuff. There's this pair of shorts I absolutely love, so I got three pairs of it. I would never have done this before because I assumed people would think that's a weird thing to do. Also, I was worried that if they noticed I constantly wore the same thing, they'd think I didn't wash my clothes regularly or something. Um, but when I realized that I'm autistic, I embraced the whole multiples thing and it was such a good feeling. I wear uh, col solid colored t-shirts. It has to be a specific brand. Nothing can have tags in it. When I used to have to wear nice clothes to work, I felt like I died a little inside every single time I wore them because they were always uncomfortable. I never felt like myself in them. It was the worst. Like when I was in the military, I had to wear BDUs all the time, which those were comfy and I never had to figure out what I had to wear for work. So 
that just made things easier too. Um, I used to wear jeans because I thought I was supposed to, since it seemed like everyone else did. It was hard to find a pair that I felt comfortable in. Uh, I don't like clothing that sticks to my body because it just makes me feel claustrophobic. So now I wear sweatpants and I don't feel bad about it. Uh, it seems stupid when I think about it. I mean, of course I could have worn sweatpants before and not jeans, but some people equate sweatpants with laziness and I did not want to be thought of as lazy. I also wear t-shirts that are a little baggy, so I feel like I can move around easily. Um, and clothing has always been a big issue for me, so uh, I don't know about that. Um, here's a sensory issue for you. I'm allergic to the sun. <laughs> well, like more like the heat. I feel like I feel like this summer's been the hottest I've ever experienced. You know, climate change. I'm good like mid-70s mid and below, but anything above that and there are some real problems. The best way I can explain it is I get overheated very quickly, whether I'm doing something outside or inside, doesn't matter. For example, mowing my tiny ass yard, which takes 10 minutes tops, has become something of a nightmare. If I mow when it's 80 and above, it only takes about 5 minutes before I start feeling lightheaded and nauseous. Doesn't matter if there's shade. Uh, if there isn't a breeze at all, it's down to three minutes. Uh, I've always been good at knowing when I'm about to vomit and how much time I have before it comes out. So um, I guess that's good. Um, the vomiting thing started in adulthood. When I was a kid, uh, I fainted pretty frequently if I had to do anything outdoors for long on really hot days. So I don't know like why it transitioned to vomiting, but I mean, either way, it's pretty embarrassing. Um Anyways, if I actually pay attention to how hot I'm feeling, which I'm trying to get better at, I can stop it from getting to the point that I puke. So instead, what I do is I run inside and either sit in front of an air conditioner or a fan, close my eyes, and think about anything other than how fast my heart is beating. However, when fall and winter come, I can go outside in shorts and feel great. I don't own a winter jacket. I just wear hoodies. I don't own winter boots. Sometimes I shovel snow without gloves. Um, I don't feel like the, the zombie I am during the summer when the sun's out and I'm blind and I'm walking like a turtle. <laughs> um, I also have these weird body temperature issues that are beyond annoying. For example, I'll turn the AC off because I'm cold. Then I get hot a few minutes later and turn, uh, and turn it back on, but it's still cold. So I turn the AC back off, turn my fan on and face it at me but there's too much breeze. So I get up, turn the fan a bit. Then there's not enough of a breeze. So I get up and adjust it again. Um, <laughs> I can't stand it. Or like, how about when I'm in the car, AC is on for a bit, but it's too cold. So I turn it down. Then it's too warm. So I turn it up. Then I turn it back down and crack the window, but I don't like the breeze blowing my hair around. So I roll the window back up. Whether I'm using heat or AC in the car, 10 minutes doesn't go by without me either adjusting the fan speed or or the window or anything else that can help me regulate my body temperature better like what the hell is menopause gonna be like for me <laughs> uh visually I like to feel comfy in my space I had a boss once who let us do whatever we wanted with our offices we could have lamps if we wanted we could put stuff on the walls he didn't care about that I felt very comfortable in my office because I was able to use lamps since bright lights painful for me on the walls I put my favorite paintings when I felt stressed it was it was nice looking around my office and distracting myself with pleasant things to look at um it was pretty much the only time I've had an office I actually enjoyed being in at home uh, I have a room to myself I look around a lot and I like to have a lot to look at so my walls are pretty packed with paintings and other things I have the lighting exactly how I want it. Everything has a place because I can't stand clutter, so it's neat and organized. Um, if I had to look at clutter, it would drive me crazy. And as, for the, as far as the rest of the house goes, um, I like it clean and organized. Water bottles and other beverages have to have labels facing the front and be lined up neatly. I think I think all of this is less about needing to have control and more about feeling anxious or... Um, or unsettled if something doesn't look the way I'd like it to. 
when I was in the military, I had to room with a few people when I was deployed and they'd leave their clothes everywhere. And the sink was a huge mess of makeup. They let the trash overflow. It's not like I could have made them not be like that. So seeing this on a daily basis left me feeling uneasy the entire time I roomed with them. I just, I don't understand how people are okay with just tossing their stuff wherever. Um, that's all I've got on sensory stuff for now. Uh, I wanted to just make it known that yes, I am aware that I speak oddly. Um, <laughs> I actually, like nobody's told me this, like nobody emailed me and told me this. I just like, um, actually didn't know this until the other day when I listened to some of the first episode I did to make sure it recorded right and all that. I already have that thing where I hate hearing the sound of my voice on a recording, but my inflection's weird. I feel like I talk like I'm Canadian sometimes, even though I'm not. I also talk too fast, so I'll work on slowing down a bit because I don't even enunciate properly. Um, I mean, I returned an audiobook one time because I couldn't stand the way the lady spoke, so I get it. So if you're still listening, thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, that's all I've got for now. This was just me recording into an app on my phone hoping people find me and listen and relate and maybe have a similar experience to what I had when I heard myself on someone else's podcast. Thanks for listening. Okay, bye.